whenever you're ready, Daddy. Good morning. Welcome to University Drive Alliance Church. I'll invite you to stand with us as we begin this morning service. Just bringing our hearts open to what God has in store for us this morning. God, we invite your presence here. Can we worship your name? Amen. morning. You may be seated. Great way to start the service this morning. 
And we're so glad you're here. My name is Brian, one of the pastors on staff here. And uh, however you come this morning, some of us come with heavy hearts. I know my heart's a little heavy this morning uh, with some stuff, and I'll share that in a few moments. But uh, we're glad you're here. This is a great place to be together as a church family. And we're going to lay it all down with God and just sing the promises of that truth that we just sang. It's his will, not ours. And I do believe that. Uh, just a couple announcements before we continue to worship together. Um, kids worship team. Uh, kids, if you're uh, part of that kids worship team that's going to start practicing today, it's between services right after the morning service, uh, probably like at 10, 15 in the, um, in the kids zone area. So you'll be in there already. So you just need to stay in there for whatever, 45 minutes or whatever it's going to be in there. Um, and so plan for that. For this Sunday, next Sunday, uh, I think three Sundays in a row, and then you will be helping us lead worship on the 5th. And we're looking forward to that as you help us uh, come into the presence of God on that November 5th weekend. So kids, be planning for that. And then uh, today is our newcomer's lunch. And um, if you're relatively new, maybe you've never attended uh, a newcomer's lunch and you've been here for a year or two even, uh, you're welcome to come. I know we have a sign up and we've had people sign up, but if you haven't signed up for that, uh, Pastor Aaron and myself have decided we're going to go without food if, if that's the case. Yes, we've decided that. Uh, no, there's lots of pizza and there's lots of food. It's just an hour after the second service, so you'll need to go grab a coffee and come back. Uh, like 1230 is when we're going to start. So uh, we're excited to connect with people and, and get to know people and let you know a little bit about our church and where things are, where things are going these days. But let's continue to worship God together. This is a great morning. Let's go. I'll invite you to stand again if you are willing and if you are able to be in the house of the Lord together is such a blessing.
invite you, actually, to turn around to our family that is around you. Greet them this morning, if that's a handshake, if that's a wave, whatever you're comfortable with. We are just so thankful to be in this place together. God's love has awakened us this morning, and we are just so thankful for his love and his mercy and his grace. Let's celebrate that together this morning. In the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 24 to 25. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. Let's just bow and pray this morning. Lord, we give you all we are and all that we have. We want to learn to abide in you for every moment in our life, Jesus. We want to abide in your word so that it becomes part of us. Lord, as we abide in you and as we abide in your word, and enable us by your spirit, Jesus. Keep us connected to you and connected with our family. May we show the fruits of the spirit this morning. Joy, peace, kindness. Amen. Lord, we surrender this to you. In Jesus' name. We ask you to remain at the center and in charge of our life. Amen. Who am I that the highest king would welcome? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love. Amen. We're going to invite you to be seated for a moment. If 
we haven't had a chance to do so yet, we want to welcome you to University Drive Alliance Church. My name's Aaron. I'm one of the pastors here. And if you haven't met Brian yet, this is Brian. He's one of our pastors as well. We're just thrilled and delighted to be able to worship Jesus together today and just want to share with you a couple of things that God's been doing in our midst and an opportunity uh, to uh, invite you to pray. Uh, if some of you will remember last May, we did a special offering called Over the Horizon. And in that offering, we were raising money for a few different things. We were going to support uh, a local Christian agency called Safe Families. And, uh, and then we were going to take care of some transportation needs in Costa Rica. And we were thrilled that God moved in our midst, a real generous spirit amongst you, our people. And uh, we collected a great offering. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, you'll remember, some of that money or all of the money that we'd sent to Costa Rica was held up in their banking system. And uh, it was all legit and, and good, but we just asked for prayer that it would be released. And last week we learned that that money was released. And then on Friday, I was driving up to Calgary. I got to meet some of my high school friends 27 years later. And uh, on the trip up to Calgary to meet with them, my phone started to blow up with messages from Herson. And I'm so thrilled to share with you friends that on Friday, Herson and his dad, Marcos, bought a bus. Here's a picture of it behind us. A 50-passenger bus. There's an amazing story around it that I'll share with you another time, but an amazing story of how God provided above and beyond anything we could have ever asked or imagined. So thank you for your generosity, and thank you for praying. God is answering prayers. He's on the move. He's doing great things. And we have another prayer request just before we take our offering. We have another prayer request that came up this morning that we want to invite our church family to pray into. And so, Brian, why don't you share that with us? Um... Yeah, this morning we just found out we're supposed to be picking up Sophie on Tuesday evening, and uh, her paperwork's got held up again, and uh, there's a lot of details around that, but we're praying that God would release those papers. Um, she's supposed to be flying out our time tomorrow night, and so there's still time for God to move. Um, yeah, the IOM is the organization uh, of migration, has not been able to give her her flight tickets because of the complications in the national office there in, in, uh, in Egypt there. So anyway, we're going to pray very aggressively and into this. Um, after the morning service as well, if you would like to join me, I'm going to be praying up here. Uh, so if a little group wants to gather, we're going to pray for her and uh, see if we can get those papers released. Yeah. Yeah, this is a huge deal, and it just seems to be that as people step forward for Jesus, the devil loves to get his, his or tries to get his fingerprints into uh, the work that's being done. So we want to pray against that, and I want to invite us, church, as we've seen God answer a prayer, this is another great opportunity to pray. We want to pray for the situation over in Israel and the Gaza Strip. Uh, we want to be praying for things that are taking place in our own lives, and so we're going to invite the ushers to come forward. And as they do, uh, we're going to pray for uh, this morning's tithes and offerings, but we're going to pray into these situations. And after church is done, if you'd like to come forward and uh, pray with Brian and a team of people who will be up here at the front, we'd encourage you to do that. So, Yeah, let's pray together. Will you do that? Good. God, we know that you are in control of all things. Yeah. And the things that are going on in our individual lives, God, we know that you lead us and guide us in so many crazy ways. And we just sang, we are a daughter, a son, a child of you, God. And we know that Sophie is your daughter uh, over there. And we know that you have plans for her. And you've uh, been guiding her through this process over these last three plus years or whatever it's been. And God, we know you have a plan and a, a destination for her. And we've entrusted that to you. And we just pray that you, your hand would be upon uh, this situation that you would, through your providence, just release that paperwork for her to get out of that plane um, on a scheduled time. Or maybe there's a new time, a better time. I don't know. God, we will just trust you in all of this. And I pray that you would give her hope and confidence and strength and courage as she navigates this situation, Father. And we entrust that to you. God, we thank you for the answered prayer for this bus for her son. And and the ministry over there. God, we know that there's going to be great things that you're going to do in and through this vehicle. And it's crazy that just a bus with tires on it and seats will be used for your kingdom. But God, we know it will. And we just entrust this, this ministry to you and pray your blessing upon this bus. And we pray for safety as it goes around and picks up people to, to bring uh, the good news to you. 
God, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to give back to you a little of what you've entrusted to us. God, may you use these funds to further your kingdom, both here at UDAC, in our community, and around the world globally, Father. We entrust it all to you. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Kids, we're going to uh, dismiss you to Kid Zone right now. And so if uh, you want to go, you, God bless you as you go. And church, I just want to invite you as well that in these next moments, I know there's lots going on in life. There's great things and there's heavy things. And on mornings like this morning, these are great moments to surrender to Jesus and to just open our hands and worship him and allow him to move in our lives, to lift us and encourage us. And I think right now, my sense was that as Brian was praying, that we needed to do this in a fresh way. And so I want to invite you to stand and join our worship team as we sing these songs. And maybe in a fresh way, maybe for the first time, lift up your hands, sing praises to Jesus. Give over to him the things that are going on that are heavy in our hearts this week and worship him. Would you join us? Would you stand? And let's sing together. From the book of Romans, chapter 9. But now God's way of putting people right with himself has been revealed. It has nothing to do with law, even though the law of Moses and the prophets gave their witness to it. God puts people right through their faith in Jesus. God does this to all who believe in Christ because there's no difference at all. Everyone has sinned and is far from God's saving presence. But by the free gift of God's grace, all are put right with him through Christ Jesus who sets them free. Wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and Friend, who would have thought that a Lamb could rescue the souls of men? Oh, you rescue the souls of men. Counselor, comforter, keeper, spirit we long to embrace. You offer hope when our hearts have hopelessly lost the way. Oh, we hopelessly You fall.
Well, friends, I hope that you've had a glorious fall season this year. Hasn't it been incredible? Did anybody see the sunrise this morning? It was one for the ages. Rick Dempsey, one of our elders, came in and he was like, did you see the sky? And it was just starting to fade out as we looked out the window. But man, this has been a glorious season. You know, one of the things, an answer to prayer that's taking, also taking place this morning is happening up in Stetler, and I would encourage you to pray for the Dixon family. Uh, Pastor Scott and Debbie are up there with their daughter, Erin, and her husband, James, and they're dedicating uh, their first grandchild, uh, Titus, to the Lord. And so exciting moments, uh, that's a whole story surrounded and wrapped up in prayer, and uh, God has been so good. And so let me encourage you that God is on the move, and he's doing great things. We, uh, too, have been really enjoying this fall season, and uh, last weekend, maybe that was the pinnacle of fall this year, I don't know, it was spectacular, and we had the opportunity to get outside and play some pickleball. We'd connected with some uh, dear friends of ours, and we agreed to play at the new courts in Legacy Park, and we set out for what promised to be, and later would deliver, to be a great afternoon. The weather, do you remember it? It was perfect, 28 degrees Believe it or not, there was no wind, and so when we showed up at the courts, we were ready to go. We were rocking our shorts, our sunglasses, and I came onto the court feeling pretty good about how this was going to go, pretty good about my abilities. I thought at least that at this point in my life, I'd picked up some skills, not a master by any stretch, but I would have the ability to hold my own and make things somewhat competitive. And so I was loose. I was in the zone, and when we first started playing, it started to go pretty good. Our opponents, the parents of this family, were playing against Ralna and I, my wife, and and things were good. They would get a point, we would get a point, and things were going relatively smooth until about the second or third uh, game, I can't remember. When one of the parents substituted out, and a new player substituted in, as most of you would appreciate in racquetball sports, things can go pretty status quo, can go pretty steady, but when someone starts to put curve on the ball, that's when things get interesting. And so when my opponent, and they'll rename Nameless, they're in the building here this morning, when uh, when they threw the ball up and when they came down and they did this motion, I knew I was in trouble. And here was the issue. I watched the ball go up in the air. I watched the ball come down. But when the ball made contact with their pickleball racket and they put spin on the ball, I started to get concerned. The ball started to come towards me. It was curving through the air, and then it curved down toward the court. And I watched it hit the ground while my legs were frozen in place, and I could do nothing. I had experienced something in sport that I'd heard a lot about, but had seldom experienced, and that is the ability to have vision to see the next move, but then also to have the inability to step up and deliver on what I could see. Time after time, serve after serve, I would watch the ball come over to the net, only to be humbled by the fact that my feet seemed to be planted in blocks of cement, and there was nothing I could do to defeat this young opponent. Finally, three hours later, at the mercy of my teammate, who was somebody different than Ralna at this point, we had tried a few different combinations, the suggestion was made that we should end the game. Maybe it was the hot weather, Maybe it was the lack of water. Maybe it was my short shorts. Whatever it was, my teammate was a true teammate, and he called the game and said it was over. And the opportunity to defeat this humble, or the the opportunity to, to humble and defeat this young Greek god of an athlete was gone, and I was beat. All kidding aside, well, that actually happened, but... I wonder if oftentimes in life, friends, much like my ability to get frozen in sports or in performances or in other areas of life, if our spiritual lives can become reflections of what took place last Saturday afternoon. We know where we're supposed to go. We don't know where we want to be. God's given us a picture of the places and spaces he wants to take us. But for some strange reason, we're frozen and we struggle to move forward. We get stuck and we, and we can't take that next step. There seems to be at times an inability to transfer from things that are up here in our head and in our mind and apply them to places like here in our heart. 
And so to this morning, as we continue on in the series called Life Without, Wa- uh, Life Without Water Wings, we're going to continue to talk about how we can belong to Jesus, how we can step forward with Jesus. We're going to talk about how we can expand our spiritual comfort zones and the importance of stepping forward with Jesus when at times it feels like we can't. And so if you have your Bible this morning, I'd encourage you to open the Matthew chapter 14 is where we're going to land today, verses 22 to 23. Um, If you're online, at the bottom of the chat, there's a button that you can push called Bible, and that'll pull up an online Bible for you there, and we would invite you and welcome you to use that as we interact and engage in God's Word here today. If you're in-house here and you'd like a Bible, uh, at the back usher's table at the back, there are a number of Bibles, and we would love for you to take that and use it this morning, and then take it with you as our gift to you. We love when, as a family, we're in God's Word and want to be very deliberate in doing so. But let's read this this morning, Matthew chapter 14, starting in verse 22. I'll read it for us, and we can receive God's word together. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side. Well, he dismissed the crowd. After he dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. But when evening came, he was there alone. But the boat had already, uh, was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said. And they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. And then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, I hope you've caught that word now three times. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught them. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when he climbed into the boat, the wind died down. And then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This passage comes at a fascinating place in the gospel where things have just rapidly happened in succession. And now we can see our response that is really important as we talk about expanding our spiritual comfort zones. Back at the beginning of, Je- of Matthew chapter 14, uh, something terrible takes place. John the Baptist is beheaded. John the Baptist was a minister. He was a prophet. And at the time, he had spoken into Herod's life in a way that offended Herod and, and caused a reaction. He'd gone to Herod and he'd said, um, it isn't right for you. Uh, it's not lawful for you to have her. He's speaking of Herodias who was his brother Philip's wife. And as he spoke into into Herod's life uh, as a prophet and as a minister, um, you know, pointing him towards a better way, Herod takes offense to it and he orders for, for, for John the Baptist to be killed. And this deeply grieved the heart of Jesus. John was a dear friend. In fact, he was even a cousin. And so when he got the news that, that John had been beheaded and would have died, uh, it broke his heart. It says in verse 13, when Jesus heard what happened, he withdrew the, by boat privately to a solitary place. And there scholars say he had a short period of time, but he mourned the loss of the one who had baptized him. Then very quickly, uh, events start to change. While Jesus is gone, the disciples are gathering up uh, a group of people for Jesus to minister to, for Jesus to teach. And as they're gathering these people up, Jesus comes back to be with them. And as Jesus comes back onto the shore, the disciples come to him and they're like, it's, and I'm going to give a little bit of artistic emphasis here. They're like, it's dinner time. We need to feed these people. And so Jesus says, okay, go find some food. And they go around and they look for food. And when they come back, they've got five loaves and two fish. And they're like, this is all we could find. And Jesus looks at it and then he blesses it. And he says, take the food to the people. Tell them to eat until they're satisfied. And then, you know, I'll spend time with them. So this is what they did. They ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. And the number of those who ate was 5,000 men. And on top of that, women and children. Two very uh, fast events take place. 
Two very quick things. And then at the beginning of verse 22, it says, immediately, this is an important word today, immediately Jesus made the disciples get in the boat and go ahead of them to the other side. What I think Jesus was doing there was that he was keeping the disciples moving forward because he realized a truth in life that, that can impact us or that can, that can um, well, it can impact us. And the truth is this. It's that when life comes at us very quickly, one of two things can happen. One is that we can be motivated to keep moving forward or we can freeze. And more often than not, when we start receiving news en masse, it can slow us down. And in slowing us down, we can become very frustrated or shocked. We can become scared or taken back. Sometimes we celebrate the news like we've been able to do this morning. Amazing news about a, a bus that was purchased after uh, we, this church gave and then prayed. Amazing news of a baby being dedicated after a uh, difficult birthing journey through the years. But sometimes when the news is hard, like much of the news we receive uh, in our world here today, it can bring us to places of feeling stuck or even isolated. And these are areas that the devil loves to creep in. We can give a, the devil a foothold if we're not careful. And we can actually take steps back. We can regress in our faith or we can regress in our, in our thoughts of how Jesus is working in the world and become very, very discouraged. And this is where we see Jesus stepping in here. As these events have very quickly unfolded, Jesus immediately sends the disciples out. He tries to get them moving forward. And he says to them in verse 27, when he finally comes back to them, when Jesus sees that they're in trouble, verse 27 says, Jesus immediately, right? He's motivating them again. Immediately, he says, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. It's worded different in other translations. That middle part there in some translations says, he says, take courage. I am. Don't be afraid. And the point that I think he's making here is he's reminding them of his presence in their lives. He's reminding them of what he can do in their lives. He's stepping up and he's showing them that, yes, I know that you're in a t tough situation. Yes, I know you're struggling. Yes, I know you're afraid. But I want you to know that I see you and I know you. And I'm going to work in your life. And I think similarly, that truth remains true for us here today, that when life gets messy, when life gets hard, um, we aren't alone in these moments, that uh, a big posture of getting unstuck in life is acknowledging the presence and the work of Jesus in our lives when we cry out to him. And very similar to the disciples, when we cry out to Jesus, Jesus immediately begins to work in our lives. He immediately shows up. He immediately speaks into our heart. And moves us from places that are overwhelming and disenfranchising to moments that begin to seed hope into our story and into our perspective to help us take the first step out of the boat of whatever mess we're in. Friends, I need you to hear today because I think this is important. I sense that it's important. That Jesus hasn't forgotten you and your story and he hasn't forsaken you or me in our stories. And I believe that as we can keep this in mind, no matter how messy or how lo hard life becomes, this will become one of the first critical pieces to continue to keep us moving forward and growing in the faith. It will turn our, our circumstances from moments of de defeat to moments of, of growth as we allow Jesus to further expand our spiritual comfort zones and, and as we allow him to not, uh, or as we allow him to, to grow us. And we won't grow in our own strength. But instead, as we see God's handiwork around us and alive in us, even as crazy and as overwhelming as life seems to become, we will be filled with hope, and that hope will increase as we acknowledge him. Well, this week is a, it's a big, well, maybe it should be a big week. I'm hoping it's not going to be a big week in my life, but I'm taking another trip around the sun this next week. And the older I get, the less significant I want these markers to be. I was telling somebody this morning, not only am I over the hill, I'm starting to descend down the other side. And I've really noticed that in recent years, that there's something going on inside of me that I'm going to call restlessness. And as I've shared this with a number of different people in the circles that I find myself in, I've noticed that there's a significant number of us, and specifically in my case, men who are in their 40s, who are restless in life. 
There's a sense of there's got to be more. There's a sense of um, there's got to be a next step. There's a sense of uh, I can't just settle. That God is something different. That God is something next. That God is something abundant for me. And I've noticed that as, as I've shared my story and as others have shared their story with me, that there sure is an uncomfortable uh, awareness of the restlessness of our lives. We're not comfortable with tension. And yet I think sometimes God uses tension in our lives. Oftentimes God uses restlessness to prompt us to the deeper places that he wants to take us. And this is what I see in the story here. The disciples as they're in the boat are, are, are very aware as they would be of the circumstances that they're working with. The waves are pounding the boat. The wind is howling. Uh, it feels like it's a moment that is going to defeat them and overcome them. And as they see Jesus walking towards them, it says here in verse 26 that they were very afraid. They were terrified. In fact, at first, they didn't even realize Jesus' presence. And they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately, there's that word again. Jesus immediately speaks, speaks into their life, and he says, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Jesus reveals himself in what scholars call the theological triple play. Take courage, I am, as it says in, translation, in some translations, fear not. What he does here is he extends to Peter, and he extends to the disciples the invitation to receive his work in their lives. And what he's going to do next is powerful, because not only is he, is he going to address their physical needs, but he invites them to allow him, Jesus, to work in the spiritual needs of their lives as well. When Peter takes the first step out of the boat, what he's doing is he's saying to Jesus, yes, I will give you the space to work in my life. And yes, I need you to take care of me uh, physically. But I'm also open to you working spiritually in my heart as well. When Jesus does the theological triple play in verse 27, he's showing them that he can take care of their physical needs. But when he says in the middle, it is I, when he says, I am that's in alignment with other places in scripture where we see him declaring his divinity. And so it gives, it gives to Peter confidence that he can step forward because Jesus is about to move. And similarly, when we experience times of restlessness in our lives, well, it, become, it can become very easy to dismiss them or be annoyed by them. If we can see our restlessness as a prompting from God rather than a penalty from God, I believe that we can step into some much deeper work that God wants to do in us and through us and around us rather than being annoyed or removing ourselves or, being isola or isolating ourselves because of what we think is happening. I think for too long we've dismissed our restlessness, especially for people at my age, people in their 40s, as just a little crisis in life. If I showed up next Sunday and I was driving uh, a little hot red convertible, uh, a, a, a Nissan Z, if I showed up with my Nissan Z and, and I pulled into the parking lot, what would you say? Well, Aaron, he just turned, oh, this is horrible. Aaron just turned 45 this past week and he's having a midlife crisis. And oftentimes we try to use things, we try to use a, a trip or a new car, we try to use a, a, a physical change in our life to satisfy a restlessness that's taking place in our heart. And I think we miss seeing the work that God wants to do. I think a better posture would be when we become restless in life to open our hands and say, oh Lord, what would you have me do in life? Or Lord, what do you want to do in my life? When life gets restless, it's an opportunity for us to look up and hold our hands out and invite Jesus into our circumstances, into our moment, and then to prepare ourselves for a physical deliverance, but also a spiritual deliverance, where he will take us to much deeper and much better places. And then whatever it is that Jesus is inviting us to do, as we invite him in and as we see him make the theological triple play here, to be open to that physical and spiritual blessing and then have confidence and courage to step forward. Even when it seems crazy and it seems strange that Jesus would move us forward in this way. Whatever it is that he's, he's uh, leading us forward in, what it, wherever it is that we're restless, instead of being defeated and frustrated, 
Restlessness can become a motivator and encouragement that will give us hope and confidence to allow Jesus to move us to the deeper places. Let me illustrate this in a couple of different ways. Back in the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah's living in exile. He's living in Babylon. And he lived a probably somewhat decent life. He was the cupbearer for the king. And so he was in circles that a lot of other people weren't living in, but he was living in a broken place. He was in exile. And as he's living in exile, his brothers come to him and they say, Nehemiah, Jerusalem is laying in ruins. And as they share that reality and that story with Nehemiah, restlessness sets in. And he's stirred. And he could have been defeated and frustrated and been like, God, I know you had more. Why are you forsaking us? Why are you forsaking me? But instead, he allows that restlessness to motivate him to make a difference and to make a change. He goes to King Artaxerxes. He asks to be released. He asks for favor. It's a miracle from God. Artaxerxes releases him, and then he gives him provision and protection to go to Jerusalem and do what? Rebuild the walls. But what was amazing about that story wasn't just the physical reality that those walls were rebuilt in miraculous time, in record time. What is miraculous about that story was the spiritual work that was done to restore the dignity and the, and the identity to the people of Israel and to give them a name again. This is how God works. And when we're restlessness, there's not just a physical reality that's going to, that's going to be touched or that potentially is going to be changed, but there's a, a deeper spiritual work that we will step into to expand our spiritual comfort zones. What about the story of the woman who touched the robe of Jesus? She had lived for years with broken health. She had bled. Uh, scholars say it was like a menstrual type bleeding, and it just wouldn't stop. And around the time of her suffering, uh, Jesus was coming into Jerusalem, and people had recognized that this was the Messiah. He was their Savior. He was the long-promised King. And so he was coming into Jerusalem, and throngs of people, masses of people wanted to come and see him. And praise him and worship him. And so as Jesus is coming into the city, this woman gets stirred in her soul. Restlessness sets in. And as she's at the back of the crowd and she's looking over trying to see Jesus coming in. That restless spirit motivated her. And she started to to scrounge her way through the crowd. And as she made her way forward, I'm going to take some artistic liberties here. As she made her way forward, she's almost at the front, and Jesus walks by. And it could have been a moment of defeat, saying, once again, Jesus forgot me. But in that restless way, in that prompting of the Holy Spirit, which is what restlessness is, she reaches forward, and I'm going to take another artistic uh, liberty here. She dove and touched the robe of Jesus. She was so desperate for change in her life. She dove, and when she touched the robe of Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus felt the power leave him, and instantly she was healed. It's an amazing event, but even more amazing than the physical transformation that took place, the physical healing took place, was the spiritual transformation, because in that moment, Jesus turned, and his disciples are like, what are you doing? Don't stop. We got business to do. There's ministry to take place. We're, there's, there's more to be done. But Jesus stopped, and he turned around, and I believe he got down, and he put his hand under her chin, and he, looked, he lifted her head, and he looked at her in the eyes, and he said, daughter, you've been healed. There was a spiritual transformation that took place that day when Jesus restored the dignity and once again the identity of that woman and he lifted her physically and spiritually. Friends, I look at the world that we're living in today, even the news that we've received this morning and there's restlessness in my heart and my soul. I've got to know and hear some of your stories, and I know there's restlessness in your soul. And the truth is, is that we can be defeated by the news that we hear day in and day out. We can be defeated by our circumstances, but rather than defeat, if we could look at our circumstances and our restlessness and the prompting of the Holy Spirit as a motivation to step forward in whatever it is we feel Jesus is asking us to do. As we step forward into this, I believe that Jesus is going to work in our lives physically, but also spiritually. And he's going to take us to the deeper places of the faith and show us. He's going to expand our faith. He's going to grow our faith. And he's going to show us that greater is he who is in us than he who's in this world. 
He's going to answer the questions of our heart. He's going to uh, prove true the, the proclamations of places like Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, that says, to him who's able to abundantly accomplish all... Oh, boy, I better look it up because I'm messing this up right now. Got excited and I lost the verse. To him who's able to accomplish abundantly more than anything we could ever ask or imagine according to his power that's at work within us. He's going to do things in our life that we don't even have the courage or confidence to step into. And then afterwards, the thing that became the mess of our life will become the message of our life. And ministry will come because of our obedience to restlessness. You know what? This step is hard work. And taking, uh, this stuff is hard work. And taking the first step out of the boat of our circumstances or of our lives often includes journeying through some high seas. When you look at the, the mess of your story and the places that you long for Jesus to step into, long for Jesus to work in, oftentimes the first steps in that journey is really intimidating. And this is what we see in Peter. Let's go back to, to verse 28 for a second. Peter says, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come on the water. There's that restless spirit. And Jesus says in verse 29, come. And then it says, Peter got down out of the boat and he walked on water and he came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and he began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Isn't this the way? We sense a direction from God. We meet some opposition. We lose heart and we lose faith. And sometimes we can give up on the things that we believe God is leading us forward in. And we can walk away or we can distance ourselves. And instead of expanding our spiritual comfort zone, maybe we get defeated in our spiritual comfort zone. And we continue to wrestle with whatever it is that we're against. But once again, even in the moments of discouragement and what felt like defeat, it says in verse 31, that important word, immediately Jesus reached out his hand and he caught him and he said, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And so here's the point that I want to make, the last point that I want to make here this morning. It's that Jesus is way more concerned about our obedience than he is about our comfort. And while these journeys in life can be challenging, the blessing that comes as we obediently step forward one step at a time will be that we will be able to look back and see God's handiwork in our lives and our situations, and we will experience his power, maybe like we never have before. The first steps of our journey are hard, and they're often met with things that, that, that we need to do. Things like repentance, things like reconciliation, things like forgiveness, things like releasing the past, things like moving forward, things like letting go, things like giving. It's tough stuff, but here's the promise that I want you to hear. It always leads to a deeper blessing. There's so many things in this world that say the way that we satisfy restlessness is by consuming more. It's by trying harder. It's by talking to the right people. It's by saying the right things. It's about pursuing the comforts of life. That's going to satisfy the soul. And what I believe Jesus says to us here is something very different. Take courage. It's I. Don't be afraid. Just continue to walk forward and be obedient to the spaces and places I'm asking you to come with me to. And as we do, I think we're going to find that the satisfaction to, to that restlessness, that Holy Spirit prompting is going to come in the relationship that we share with Jesus as we continually strive to walk more closely with him and more deeply with him and not in assuming or consuming more. This life is not going to get more comfortable. That's a promise that I'll give to you here today. But I promise that with Jesus, it will become more hopeful, more blessed. And as we become restless for our present circumstance and for situations and circumstances to come, we must realize that it's okay if life is hard sometimes. And that as God prompts us and as we step forward, we will be reminded that he will show up in our lives. He will immediately move in our lives. That this isn't our forever home our hearts and our souls are meant to groan and grieve, but someday Jesus is taking us to the place that he's preparing for us. Someday with him in heaven. And when we have that deep relationship, 
we will be satisfied and hope-filled and have courage to continue to live here on earth as we work towards that. So as I close, I want to ask you a question. As you look at the circumstances of your life, as you look at the pages of your story as they're written out in front of you, I want to ask you a question, and I want to ask you, where is it that Jesus is calling us to walk on water here today? Where does Jesus want you to step out of your boat and come after him? Maybe for a little bit of time now, maybe for the first time this morning, you're hearing about relationship with Jesus and you think, that's where I'm restlessness. That's where I'm stirred. That's where I need to step forward. And so for you this morning, you need to make a first time decision to follow Jesus and come into a relationship with him. Maybe for others of us, we've been a Christian for a while and it's time to take the next step in obedience and, and get baptized and take a next step with him there. Maybe for you, it's a next step in repentance of, of asking for forgiveness of some sin that's, that's built up like spiritual plaque inside your heart. Maybe it is uh, just trusting Jesus with your circumstances or your story or your health. Maybe it's reconciling with another person who's in this room or, or who you're close with. Maybe it's forgiving something. Maybe it's the courageous step to step away from consuming more and trusting Jesus more. I'm trusting whatever the Holy Spirit is stirring inside your heart today is going to be the very place that you will step forward in. And I'm trusting that there are many of us, myself included, who are feeling restless in this moment. That's the Holy Spirit. And while these are hard days, friends, these are also days that I believe Jesus is busy working within. Jesus is working um, in many, if not all of us, to expand our spiritual comfort zones. I believe he's stretching us and he's repairing us. He's working in us. He's growing us. He's preparing us for this next season to come because I believe that for too long, North American Christians have allowed ourselves to live in the, shadow, in the shallows and the shadows of life, rather than running out to the deep and living in the abundant freedom that Jesus wants us to, to live in and to know. I believe that he wants to break the cement that's around our feet and help us to run in a fresh way again so that we can return the curveballs or the, the serves of life that seem to come our way. And we can enjoy life with fresh vigor and fresh passion, fresh obedience, because we're willing to follow him. Let me encourage you to embrace the restlessness. Let me encourage you to be obedient to whatever Jesus is inviting us to do. And let me encourage you to encourage others to do the same. These aren't days of defeat, friends. These are days where Jesus is moving. And I want to encourage you with one last verse from Psalm 27 where he says this, I remain confident of this, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart, and wait for the Lord. Jesus is on the throne. He isn't defeated or discouraged. He's not surprised by the things that are taking place in our life. Instead, he's inviting us into the deeper places that he wants us to exist in and he wants us to move in. He's inviting us to step over the boat and he's saying, now is the time. Would you lift up your head? Would you walk toward me? And would you allow me to move in your life? I'm gonna pray uh, here in just a moment. And after I'm done praying, we're going to have somebody up here at the front who's uh, available to pray with you. Uh, I don't see the person I thought was going to be here. So maybe Pastor Brian. Sorry? Oh, you're on this side. So maybe Pastor Dylan, would you uh, be available for that? I just saw you back there. Slurching in the shadows. So come on out. Come into the light, Dylan. Uh, if you'd like to pray with somebody this morning, Dylan is such an awesome guy. Filled with passion filled with vigor for Jesus, loves the Lord and would love to encourage you this morning. And he'd be available to pray with you in a personal way or encourage you in, in uh, whatever way the Lord leads him to this morning. So would you pray with me? And then I'll, I'll wrap up our service here this, this morning. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we love you. And God, we confess to you here today that, man, life is hard. 
There's so many moments as we watch the news or as we get another email, as we get phone calls, as we get text messages. There's so many moments that feels discouraging and defeated, Lord Jesus. And sometimes it's hard even just to get up in the morning and face the world that's in front of us. But God, through this story of Peter and the disciples and Jesus and and walking on water, we can have confidence to know, Lord Jesus, that you don't want to just um, keep us in the defeated places of life. Lord Jesus, you want to step into our lives and move in our lives. And so, God, we embrace, uh, we embrace the, the challenge and the call that you make to us in Matthew chapter 14, verse 27. Take courage, friends, he says to us. It is I. I am, you say to us. Don't be afraid. And in that, God, we're motivated. We're given courage. We're given a heart to take one more step forward and allow you to move in our lives. God, we love you. And I pray that the story of the people of University Drive Alliance Church wouldn't be one where we comfortably existed and we would once in a while get together to be reminded of our Savior, but it would be a story of victory and a story of, ab- of, of abundant relationship with you where we willingly step into the deep places of life to do business with you and business with others because, God, we want to expand our spiritual comfort zones. We want to walk more deeply with you. We want to have hope in what so oftentimes feels like a defeated season of life. God, lift us here today. Stir in our hearts. Give us that restless spirit that is a prompting from the Holy Spirit. And move us forward, I pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. After we're done, if you'd like to come forward to pray, I think Dennis and Sharon are here too, Dylan, so you can be released. And uh, they're going to come and pray. These are awesome people as well. Some of my favorite people here. Well, you're all my favorite people, but these guys are awesome. And so come pray with Dennis and Sharon. Come pray with Brian for Sophie in that situation. And if you're new here, if you've been here for about a year and you've never come for lunch, I ordered a lot of pizza this week. There's enough pizza for 60 people. So if you want to come back around 12, 15, 12, 20, we would love to tell you more about the church. Feed you, I promise, we'll keep you for one hour or less. It will not be longer than that. And we'll look forward to a great time there. Can I give us our benediction as we close? And then I'll release you guys. Let's, let's uh, receive this together. Church, let's go and be the church. Let's go and be the hands and the feet of Jesus in a world that desperately needs him. Let's respond to the restlessness that Jesus is putting into our heart to take us to the deeper and the better places that he has for us. And let's go be light in a world that's dark. God bless you guys as you go. Have a wonderful week. We love you so much, and we can't wait to see you again soon. Have a wonderful week, and we'll talk. God bless.